guys, Sarah here from Recovering Book Quarter, and today is a shelf spotlight and unhaul day. So I'm in a very different position from which you guys normally see me. We are out in my living room, and um, instead of like normal people do that around their TV, they have you know videos and um, like video games and things like that. Now mine is full of books, which my husband hates, <laughs> but this is where we need to move on to now to go through and see what I want to keep and what I want to get rid of. So shelf spotlight, we'll see what I have. I'll tell you guys about it and then decide whether or not I can part with it. Because you know, I need to make some space. So we're just going to start. I'm not sure how much I'm going to get through today, but so let's, all right, let's just start up here. All right. So I've got some little books. Um, I have the Cradle, Cross and Crown by Billy Graham. And this is just like a little, very, very little pamphlet about, about Christmas and the true meaning of Christmas. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to keep that. And then The Case for Christmas by Lee Strobel. And um, this one was good. I might get rid of this one. There's a couple of highlights in here. And I think I might go through. Somebody had left me the suggestion last time of if there's books that have quotes in them and that's why I want to keep them to start a journal that's just for book quotes so I can keep the quotes but get rid of the book and so I think I'm going to to start doing that so I think that's what I'm going to do with this one I think I might do that with this one too I know they're little but I think that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to unhaul those so I'm going to write down the quotes and then I've got um epic by John Eldridge the story God is telling and I feel like I can get rid of this one too. There's just a couple quotes that I can go through and write down. So, all right, starting off great. <laughs> three books. Look to three books, getting rid of three books. Let's go here. Okay, so I have um, the first in the Mitford series, At Home at Mitford by Jan Karen. This is staying forever. Um, I love that. It's one of my absolute favorite book series of all time. It's not going anywhere. Um, anybody that doesn't know what that's about. So Mitford is about this, this town in the middle of the mountains and this pastor Tim, father Tim, um, and the hijinks that he gets up to in this town and all the people in the town and the, it's so character driven and it is just so wonderful. And there are a ton of them. I love them all. I've read them all. I can't wait for her to come out with another one. And uh, yeah, so good, love it. Okay, One Incredible Savior, Celebrating the Majesty of the Manger. This is from the writings of Max Lucado, which means they're just things taken from other books that he has. And I think, I, I think I'm going to unhaul that one. So the way I have you set up today, I'm actually standing up and I've got a table that I do my puzzles on and that's what my tripod's on so it makes it real nice too because I can just set my books on there so I keep getting closer to the camera. Okay, The Immortal Nicholas by Glenn Beck and um, I love this one. I, you know, if there weren't like a million things to read, I would read this, reread this every Christmas and it is the story of St. Nicholas and I love it so much. If you want to read a really, really feel good story at Christmas time that is a faith based story, I really recommend this and sharing it with your kiddos. So, keeping that, then I have Xana's Gift by Orson Scott Card, um, A Life in Christmases. And I remember this being good. I remember enjoying it. It's just this, it's real little. I mean, it's more like a novella, it's only 144 pages. And I want to say, it's been a long time since I've read it. I want to say it's about a, a little girl who was always very artistic. And I want to, I could be totally wrong. I want to say she passes away. No, her brother passes away. And then it's a story about the, the last painting that this, the, the little girl, Zanna, Susanna, that she made for her brother before he died. Um, and... I'm gonna keep this because I think I might want to reread this because I totally don't remember very much about it. So I want to read it again. And I have On This Holy Night by 
Um, this has Max Licato, David Jeremiah, Rick Warren, John Maxwell, Bill Hybels, and Jack Hayford. And it's just like a bunch of little things about Christmas. And I am going to unhaul that. All right, guys. No bad this time than I did last time. Okay. All right, we've got Boundaries by Henry Cloud and John Townsend. When to say yes, how to say no, to take control of your life. And this was a life changing book. It takes a faith based approach to saying no and really like evaluating the things that are important in your life and how to decide what you're going to make time for and you know like putting boundaries up and there's a bunch more i know there's like boundaries with with your kids which i have um i haven't read that one yet and then there's some other ones in that series too but very good i definitely recommend that then i have from the great lives from god's word series by charles swindoll about job and esther i have this full series just finished this one um and just finished getting the last book I needed for the series. So um, this is books two and seven. I'm not reading them in order. And I am going to keep these. These are really good. I like those a lot. And right, then I have a Utah devotional Bible, which this is, I have this for Cassidy for when she gets older. Um, so that's staying. Okay, then we've got Core 52. 15 minute daily guide to build your Bible IQ in a year by Mark E. Moore. And this one is like, it's said to do this every week for an entire year. And I did this last year and it was good. Um, I think I'm going to keep this one for reference. Yeah. And I've got some stuff I've written in there too. So keeping that. All right, then I have um, the, a children's Bible. This is an illustrated Bible, and this was actually given to me for my first communion. See, look, check it out. That's the inscription. It's from the Parisi family. Um, May 7th, 1989. So I made my first Holy Communion. I was baptized as a Byzantine Catholic, baptized, and then, you know, communion in that. So this is a very treasured gift that I will keep always. You guys can probably hear my school my floor is squeaky here anyway please ignore it okay definitely not getting rid of this look at this sucker check out that tab man very much added to annotated so this is the believers bible commentary second edition by william mcdonald and uh this is fabulous if you're looking for a good commentary one book this is the longest book i've ever read in my life did it over a year alongside the KJV Bible when I was reading it that year. And um, yeah, um, definitely recommend it. Very, very good from a theological, like from a theological perspective. I, I think it's a, a really good one. Okay. I can tell you I'm not going to run any of these, but I will show you guys. These are the Bibles. All of these are ones that I have read. This one is in terms of like... The Bible I connect to the most, like the one that I feel like is part of me, that is this one here. And that is, this is a NIV. And um, this was a gift from my best friend whenever I was in uh, junior high and high school. She gave this to me in, on Christmas of 1999. And this was before I came to Christ. She is a big reason I came to Christ. Um, I have written in the back here. I was saved in May of 2001. And um, I she this was like the best gift best gift ever she went through and she highlighted verses that she loved and verses that, that reminded her of me and I just I will treasure this forever. So this is like my favorite Bible of the ones that I have. Then the this is the one that I read through the first time. The first time I ever read through the Bible, I read this one. And this is the um, NLT translation, the New Living Translation. And if you want to read the Bible, but you've tried it in the past and you've stopped just because of the language and you find it inaccessible, I highly, highly recommend this one. This is the most accessible Bible that I've ever read. You see it in your head, like it's a story. It's so good. And then 
This one too, it's, this is the prettiest Bible. So like it's meant to color. Um, so it's actually a coloring book too, which I haven't colored, I need to. And then there's like, you can journal on it too. There's space to do journaling. And it's just, it's a gorgeous edition. This one is the one I connect to the most in regards to reading it. So I definitely, definitely recommend the NLT and I really like that Inspire version. And they really, they have that Inspire coloring journaling Bible and a bunch of different translations. Okay, then I've got the KJV, King James version. Um, I read this one the year after I read the NLT. You could not go from more accessible to more inaccessible. That's why I wrote, I read the commentary alongside this one because the language is just, it's King James language. It's not the easiest to understand. So read that one. Then we have, um, this is The Message, and this one is by Eugene Peterson, is the one that does this translation. And um, I thought it was okay. I did not love it as much as I love the NLT, and it takes a lot more liberties, I felt like. It was so good and I, I would recommend it, but it was not my favorite translation. I've got the Apologetic Study Bible. This is the Holman Christian Standard Bible, HCSB. This is the one I did last year. Um, and I really like study Bibles. I have a bunch of them that cover all kinds of different things, different subjects, but apologetics is one of my passion areas. And um, if you enjoy apologetics, I would definitely recommend this. And I did like the HCSB translation itself as well. And then the last one that I have read all the way through is, this is the English Standard Version ESV Bible. And um, this one I read in the year of 2019. And this is another, this is a, a journaling Bible. I think they call it like a loose, some kind of leaf something leaf they call it and what it means is that every after every page is a blank page so that you can journal in it and that was my intent and maybe one day I'll do that but I did not yet but it's a really pretty version and I did like the ESV translation so those are all the Bibles I have read all the way through my goal is to eventually have read all of the different translations so that yeah because because that's what I feel drawn to do. All right, moving on. Um, oh, let's see, okay. A Pinch of Magic. Uh, this is by Michelle Harrison, and this one was good. This is the first in the series. I'm keeping this because this is on my list of ones that I want to read with my niece at one point. Same thing with The Train to Impossible Places by P.G. Bell. Um, both of these are middle grade fantasies, and I read those for over middle grade March. I'm trying to think. I can't remember if I read these over middle grade March or over Believe a Thon, but they were good. And I, I, I think that my niece will like them a lot. I have 13 A Little Blue Envelopes by Maureen Johnson, and I, I was actually surprised at how much I enjoyed this one because. Goodreads, it only had, it had like, I think it was a low three star rating. I really, really enjoyed this. And it's a young adult. And there is this girl who's, I want to say she's going into college, into her first year of college. And her favorite aunt dies. And she leaves her a scavenger hunt. Um, these envelopes, these 13 blue envelopes. And she has to go to Europe. She tells her exactly what to take with her. And it's kind of a coming of age story. And there's one more, it's actually duology, The Last Little Blue Envelope, and I haven't read that one yet, but I'm gonna keep that because I really did enjoy that. I thought it was good. All right, then I have The Magic Misfits by Neil Patrick Harris. And this was book one in The Magic Misfits series. And this one, I remember this being fun. Um, this was a Believe-a-thon book that I read, 
and I think I'm going to keep this one for future reading with my nieces. Same with Malamander. Again, first in the series. And I only have the first ones of all these. I need to get the rest of them. Um, this is by Thomas Taylor and another middle grade that was super fun and for future Ava. Okay. The Mall by Megan McCafferty. This was... This one was tough because... I, I loved it. This takes place in the 90s at a mall, but the, the target audience is young adults. And I just don't know that young adults would get as much out of this as like you would, as adults would. I do think I'm going to unhaul it and give it to um, my, my friend Melissa, and Cassie's friend Shelby, the daughter. Melissa's daughter, Shelby. I give her a lot of my young adult books. Uh, after I'm finished with those. So I think I might give this to her and see what she thinks of it. And if it does hold up for kids today, um, if not, her mom will probably enjoy reading it. So, okay, unhauling that one. I was doing so good to start. No, my unhaul pile's a lot smaller than my geek pile. Where Dreams Descend by Janella Angelus. And this was the Owl Crate special edition, I believe it was. Um, why doesn't it say? I feel like it was all crate and it's signed by the author. And uh, I did enjoy this one a lot and I'm looking forward to the next one. So author signature, which is always fun. Yeah, all crate. So I'm going to keep that. Then The Broken Girls by Simone St. James. This was my first Simone St. James. And I had a hard time getting into it. it. Took me several chapters to really get into it. But so glad that I persevered because I ended up absolutely loving it and decided I need to read everything Simone St. James has written. I've only read one other thing so far, but I want to read her entire backlog. And she has a new one coming out in 2022, I believe it is, that I'm super excited about. So keeping this because I will definitely reread that one again. All right, One to Watch by Kate Stame in London. And I know that this one was like really mixed. There's people that didn't like this, that didn't think that the, uh, that the body representation, the plus size representation was all that great. I personally loved it and read it like in one day. And I thought that the rep was really good. Um, it felt like being in my own head reading what she was thinking and the stuff she was going through. So I'm going to keep that one. And, um, if you don't know, this is like a, uh, it's like a version of the bachelorette and the, the main character is a blogger, blogger, I guess you would call it. And, uh, she's plus sized and feels that she's sick and tired of seeing the bachelor and bachelorette with the no plus size rep and it's not real so they ask her to be the next bachelorette and um how that goes for it and i loved it so keeping that okay then i've got jesus is risen by david limbaugh and uh this is a really really well researched book about paul the Apostle Paul. And um, I did like it a lot. I mean, it's really like a commentary on um, Acts. Let's see. It covers the book of Acts, Romans, 1st and 2nd Corinthians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, Galatians, yeah, so it's a commentary on all of those, and I'm going to keep that. All right, then I have Formatting and Submitting Your Manuscript, third edition. Um, and this is because I was going to write a book. <laughs> I have so many first chapters on my computer. I was like, I'm going to write a book, and I'm going to submit it, and I'm going to get it published. And oh, that didn't happen. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this because this is probably horribly outdated at this point. And let's see, this was written in 2009. So I'm sure there's been several versions since then. So I am going to get rid of that. I'm throwing stuff on the floor. All right. These are all keepers because these are 
the rest in a Mitford series. So a light in the window. These high green hills. <laughs> Out of Can Canaan. In this mountain. A common life. Home to Holly Springs. Now I'm trying my best to collect them all in hardback, but I don't have, um, you know, it's slow going getting them all. Okay, a new song. Light from Heaven. Shepherd's Abiding, which is such a great, great Christmas read. In the Company of Others. Come Rain, Come Shine and some are safe with someone good so i think that's all of them it's possible my friend bonnie might have one of them still because she always borrows them from me let me put all these back and i'll come back and we'll do the next shelf okay moving on to the shelf here all right so we have Steven Tyler, Does the Noise in My Head Bother You? And this is one of the best memoir biography, not biography, because he wrote it himself, memoirs, autobiographies that I have ever read, keeping that one. The Candy Makers by Wendy Mass. Really, really enjoyed this one, so definitely a saver to read with Ava. The Circle Maker by Mark Batterson. Um, I think... I am going to do the journal, the quotes in the journal one for that. Very good. And I have to say, I do definitely recommend, if you feel like stagnant in your prayer life or like you just don't know how to pray, um, anything like that, then I would definitely recommend his Circle Maker books. He has more than just that one, which I think I've probably shown you guys in past bookshop things. Okay. Oh, all right. So here's this picture of my brother and I. This was from I think I was in college when we took this. So we went and we got the pictures taken for my parents. Okay, for Christmas. I want to say I was like a sophomore. He was a senior in high school. I must have been a. This must have been my senior year of college, and um, it was great because we went and did this at J C Penney's and. Uh, they kept trying to pose us like we were getting engagement pictures taken. I'm like, dude, this is my brother. We are siblings. This is not engagement, but <laughs> there's our picture. Look how young we are. Oh, time. So that lives on this shelf. All right, another Mitford book to be where you are. And uh, so obviously that's not going anywhere. The Invisible Library by Genevieve Cogman. Read this one fairly recently. This is like steampunk alternate. Um, alternate, alternate reality. Uh, such a great concept. I really wanted to love it, but really didn't. So I'm going to unhaul that. All right. Then we've got, uh, the Hunger Games trilogy here. And, um, which one was it? Let's see. I got a big surprise when I ordered this, this one. So I ordered this from Amazon and don't you know that when I got it, as it turned out, it was an autographed copy. And uh, that was super exciting, unexpected. So Hunger Games trilogy, um, not get rid of that, love that. And then another, another favorite trilogy, uh, and that would be the Carval. So Carval, which is my least favorite out of the three, unpopular opinion, I know. Legendary, which I think was my favorite of the three. And then finale, which I also really did love. Uh, I had book hangovers after I read Legendary and Finale. And she has um, another one coming out called Once Upon a Broken Heart. They already have pre-ordered a special edition from Barnes Noble with the pink cover that's autographed by Stephanie Garber and I am so excited. Oh, I have a feeling I'm not gonna be getting rid of any of these guys. All right, Nevermore and Wondermore. Um, I'm sorry, Nevermore and Wonder, <laughs> Wonder Smith. Um, this is from the Nevermore series, the Charles and Morgan Crow. <sighs> and I love these so much. These are not going anywhere. I have the third one too. I just, hollow box, who knows where it's at. 
probably over there probably over in that one we'll see that whenever we do that okay then we've got this is another favorite series guys this is also another middle grade uh dragon's green this is called the world quake world quake it's a trilogy but the way that it ends i need another one so i'm hoping that at some point i haven't checked in a while i should check to make sure there's not another one out there's only three at this point that I know of, but I need more in my life. So Dragon's Green, The Chosen Ones, and Gala Glass. And I love these so much. You get to go into, this is that trope where you, where you get to go into books, which is such a great, great trope. Okay. Um, the Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. And uh, <laughs> this has not really helped my life at all, can I just say. So I think I'm gonna, I know there's a, a couple quotes in here I like. So I will go through and do the journal, quote journal for that. Um, Very Good Lives by JK Rowling, The French Benefits of Failure and the Importance of Imagination. I always thought that this would be like a good one for Cassidy to read. Um, I'm gonna keep this. Maybe, maybe she will at some point. You Are a Badass by Jen Sincero. Help to stop doubting your greatness and start living an awesome life. And this one was fun, but I don't think I'll ever read it again. So I'll take the quotes I like, write those down. The Queen of Babel by Min Meg Cabot. And uh, this is, I'm trying to think if there's two or three in this. It's young adult. And I really enjoyed this so much. So I'm going to keep this. I'd like to do a reread of this at some point. Um, so it, I think it's the Queen of Babel, then the Queen of Babel gets married. I don't even remember. But this is like definitely like a beach read. This is a fun beach read. I enjoyed it. Okay, The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. And um, yeah, keeping this one. Loved, loved, loved that so much. All right, Healing Oils of the Bible. Um, this is by David Stewart. And I don't need this anymore. Um, I can't see myself ever going back into this. So yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. All right, Sam from the Beginning by Ever Max Kendi. And um, this was one of my top reads of last year. And I'm going to keep that. Everybody should read that. Then Beach Read by Emily Henry, which again, I, <laughs> I loved this. It, I mean, four stars, like four star read. And I would say like, it's predictable, so predictable, but so enjoyable. <sighs> I think I need to keep it. I need to keep it for now anyway. I think I'll read it again at some point. All right. The Hidden Magic of Walt Disney World. This is trivia. I don't know if I want to keep it or not. I mean, there's some fun stuff in here, but I think I'm going to unhaul. And then Disney Trivia from the Vault. Secrets Revealed and Questions Answered. Um... I'm gonna keep that one, keep that one. Okay, if I've got these kids books, Epcot and the Magic Kingdom, I got these whenever I was at Disney and I'm gonna keep those, but I think I'm gonna move these over to my Ava shelf. And then I am Aspian Girl by Tanya A. Marshall and this is invaluable. If you have a, if you are a female on the spectrum or you have a child that's a female on the spectrum or you know a female on the spectrum. I cannot recommend this one enough. Get that, so I have to keep that. Okay, I'm moving this over to the Ava file. All right, and uh, that's all from there. There's not as much on there as I thought there would be. Then down here, oh, at the very bottom, I just have like, those are a bunch of picture books, like pictures, photographs, so gonna stay but okay John Hughes a life in film just read this one it was fine but I'm never gonna read it again so I'm gonna unhold that 
And then just read Hamilton, The Revolution. Love this so much. Keeping this forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I love Hamilton. All right. That's it. I did. I mean, that didn't take as long as I thought it would. Um, getting rid of some. Not as many as I hoped I would, but so is the life of a book lover. I, but I did, I did okay, right? I did okay? Okay, that's all. That's my haul. Un, no, unhaul. My unhaul and shelf spotlight. All right. Did I make the right decisions? What do you guys think? Have you read any of these? What are your thoughts? If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you would like to see more from me, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. If you would like to connect with me other places, all of the places you can find me on the interwebs can be found in the description. All right, guys, I'll catch up with you later. Bye.